Hi and welcome back to Smart Repair. Today we're going to be repairing a PlayStation 3 with the red light of death. Very common problem with these PlayStations, especially the older ones. So I'm going to do a complete teardown today. And if you know how to tear one of these down, you can skip right to, um, I'll have a link here, to the fun stuff towards the end. So we start by removing the warranty sticker. A little tab there that clips out these older ones it always breaks just clips out just a rubber like grommet and in behind there is a security screw um, any small flathead screwdriver will open it So once we have that removed, we can slide the top casing off. Once the casing's off, we can remove this little cover that's on the side of the the other side of the PlayStation. It reveal the um, docking bay for the hard drive. You can see the blue screw in the middle. So we have to remove that first. You see a little catch just below where the screw goes. Just slide that back. And the hard drive should pop out. So now we can remove all the screws that are holding the top cover on. You notice that I put little marks on the casing every now and again. It's when the screws are different. If they're a different size, if they're longer, I'll put a long line. If they're shorter, I'll put a short line beside the arrow um, where the screw goes. Just an easy way to remember, just to put them in the right order. Most of these are the same size, they're, they're, they're fairly long ones. There's one that's kind of half size and then there's two that are um, small altogether. So just be careful when you're lifting off the cover that you lift it off or lift it like you're opening a book. And there is a ribbon cable, you can see it there, um, that is attached to the board and that needs to be um, unclipped from the board. You can see it's pretty dusty. Here you can see I'm removing the network cable. And the ribbon cable. So with screws just in the corresponding holes, so we won't lose any. And we can remove the cable from the uh, power supply.
and we undo the screws on the power supply auto. So there's a clip uh, clip cable here. You just have to press down on the clip while you're um, pulling it out, and it'll it'll clip out for you. There's also an earthing strap. Um, the earthing strap is a different size screw with a washer on it, so just gonna make sure to keep that. Just remember that one. So that's the five screws removed. And as you can see, the network cable is actually attached by a bit of tape there, so just be careful you don't rip it. So now we can remove the card that's attached to the network cable. Just one screw on the top. Um, just be careful because the cable is it's fairly small, it's um, delicate enough. So I'll leave it, leave it in a safe place. Now we can remove the four screws from the mount and the board at the front of the PlayStation. There's also um, a very small ribbon cable in the middle, just, uh, just be careful of that one. You have to lift the tab before you can pull out the cable. Go just removing the connector from the board now you need to be careful and open this um, to the right you can see the ribbon cable is still connected there um, there's a long tab that needs to be pulled up before that cable will come out as you can see there it's just unclipped and the cable will come out by itself Again, leaving the screws in the corresponding holes. And you can see we'll just bag the, um, the screws there for the power supply and keep them separate. We can now begin to remove the um, screws that are on the border. See where the screws are smaller again or longer. I'm putting a little mark beside the hole so I'll know um, which screw corresponds with which hole. Once the screws are removed, um, the backing comes there, the, the bottom of the PlayStation comes away cleanly. As general rule of thumb when I'm doing these, if they've been overheated, um, I will disassemble the fan and everything and get in there and clean as much as I can before I put the unit back together. Now 
just remove the internal battery. And just from, uh, loosen the clips on the, um, the back of the housing. You can see the three clips here on this side. Now we can remove the four screws that are on the tension plates connected to the heatsink. These plates have a slight bend in them so through varying temperatures they will um, they'll keep tension on the bolts. You notice one of the top left ones there is extremely loose. Once the two plates are removed, we can carefully remove um, or separate the, the internal housing. The housing hinges from the rear so it can only open in one direction. I just know some sticky residue on the board here. We're going to clean out isopropanol after I dust the board. So now is a good time to remove the fan, uh, just so we can thoroughly clean it. If you had a compressor you could blow out these parts but I still like to separate them so we can have a good look in there and make sure there's nothing left behind. And that's the majority of the heatsink. You can see the old thermal paste. And you can see the top side of the two chips. There's two screws here on the top of the hard drive caddy. They have to be removed before you can remove this plate from the board. Um, just keep an eye on these thermal pads as well, they're there for a reason, they need to be um, back in just in case they fall off, they can quite easily uh, fall off, so just keep an eye on them. I'm just going to quickly dust this side of the board as well. So now I'm going to do a small bit of cleaning with isopropanol, um, just very light, very light clean, just to get rid of the residue that seems to be on the board.
Now we can begin to remove the old thermal paste. You really need to get all this off. If it's two different companies that are making the thermal paste, you don't know how the two of them are gonna to react uh, together. So really, you can't get this clean enough. Take your time with it and you should be able to remove everything. And we can do the same for the heatsink. Again, I'm using a small bit of ice prop now just to wet the surface, and the rest comes off with a tissue. And while we're here, we can clean up the um, the housing. The dust is the majority of what causes the problems with the overheating. Um, it acts as an insulator for the board and the chips. So, besides dispersing the heat, it actually insulates it and keeps it in there. You know, so you really want these. All these components need to be clean, go back together. You can see now by removing the fan how much easier it is to clean. And that's us pretty much done with the board. The last thing to do, because we're going to cook in the board, um, if it's going to be exposed to heat, we want to remove the um, thermal pads. Um, it'll absolutely it'll destroy them. So we need to remove the. We need to remove all them from the board. And we're going to remove the two ribbon cab cables that are left over as well. You can see here I'm using a plastic pry tool um, just to try and get the, the transfer pad off in one piece. On the back side of the board, there's um, there's more small transfer pads, uh, so we have to remove all of them. I think there's five on this side of the board, and of course the two ribbon cables also.
so once we're at this point it'll be a good time to preheat the oven to 180. And we need to prop it up off the, um, off the cooking tray so we're going to use the timber handle knives. And we're going to leave it in there for 9 minutes. Ensure that the, the oven is preheated to 180 before you put it in there. It needs the, it needs the full 9 minutes. So I'm going to close the door and we'll come back in 9 minutes. Once the 9 minutes are up, now you have to be particularly careful with the board because it is fragile um, holding this amount of heat. What we're going to do is just slide out the baking tray and I've got a heat gun at the ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate a bit of heat on the two chips and we're going to try and get them above 220 degrees. Um, this way we're not really reflowing the entire board, we'll just concentrate the heat on the um, two chips. And as they're already at 180 degrees, we don't have all that far to go to push them up past 220. Once that's done, we're going to leave the board to sit for 45 minutes. Uh, you can turn off the oven as well. Inside the 45 minutes, the board should be sufficiently cool to handle. I actually left mine till the following morning. The board is cold again at this stage and we can start to put the board back together again. The first thing we'll need to do is replace the thermal pads that we took off earlier. and the five smaller thermal pads also. So now we can apply some thermal paste. Pea-sized is plenty, pea-sized is probably a bit too much actually, but you'll see here, this it, it spreads very thin. You realistically need to spread it also, because if you don't spread it, there's a good chance you get near pockets inside. Um, when the two, the two parts come together, you're more than likely going to trap air in there.
just take your time and wait till you get the best results and a nice flat surface now we're going to take a look at the heatsink very thin line in the middle I find works the best you can see the board goes in from the bottom where the plugs are and just sits in nice and easy But in the top side, there's actually hinges on the back there. So they must sit into the corresponding holes in the bottom side. We're going to give the tension plates a little bend. I like to tighten these gradually as well in a crisscross um, pattern. Now we can replace the fan. and we plug the fan into the board.
and we can refit the battery. and refit the two ribbon cables we removed earlier. I've marked and read the location of all the screws around the border. First we can fit the rear housing, uh, the earthen strap is there as well. We can now replace the two screws that are in the um, hard drive caddy. We can place everything into the bottom side of the PlayStation uh, housing. If you find it gets snagged on one side, it usually gets cast where the hard drive is. You see, can I catch it in the camera here? So if you just slide something flat in there, there you go. Remember to insert this bracket before you put on the top screws on the left hand side, them two screws as well as holding the housing together and holds that bracket on. Then we can insert the small ribbon cable. And lock it into place. So where I placed the line earlier to indicate that there was a different size screw, we can place that one in the corner. and the position of the two smaller screws.
and we can reconnect the, the network cable. We can install the power supply. And these are the screws from the power supply we bagged earlier to keep separate. plug the power supply into the board and this is the screw with the washer on it this goes on top of the earth thinning strap And the white plug plugs into the rear of the power supply. So we're getting ready to install the CD drive. The first thing we need to connect is the uh, ribbon cable. Once it's in there, we're going to push down the clip to lock it in. Just be careful as well, the network cable between the CD drive and the power supply. Just make sure it doesn't get snagged up there, it can, it can easily break. Plug the CD drive into the board. And the last ribbon cable is attached to the top of the housing was in there beside the CD drive I'm pointing. Again once that's in there we can lock it down into position. So from the front yeah, the top cover hinges and it hinges from the front um, and then close it in towards the back. Just like so. So we can insert the longest screws first.
and then we can insert the two smaller screws. And the one half size screw goes into the top right corner there. Getting towards the finish now. So that's a little bracket for the um, the screw to catch. Once you uh, slide the the top cover on, the screw will go all the way through and catch that uh, metallic uh, nut that's on the far end. And we'll replace the grommet. And while we're here, we can insert the hair drive. Once we insert it, we slide it to the right. And reinstall the blue screw from earlier. The hard drive cover clips, clips in from the right hand side to the left. that's us done. I hope this video has helped you. Um, if it has in any way at all, please like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this.